What's the word, y'all? I think the Lakers did it. Now, it's four minutes left in the game. They're up by 10. I'm assuming they put in this game away, but my eye is going to be on it. That's not what this video is about. Shout out to Russell Westbrook. The two games he's come off the bench, he's looked pretty good. If he embraces that, the, the Lakers might be high until they figure out the trade because I still believe, even with a win, uh, <laughs> that they should make that trade. But if everything goes as planned and they can hold this 10-point lead, there is no winless teams left in basketball i want to spend a lot of time in this video trying to figure out when is it too early to really panic but before we do that let's do some rapid fires of the games that aren't associated with that panic button game number one the boston celtics beat the washington wizards and the wizards fall to three and three the boston celtics i mean i'm be honest with you i turned this game off after the first quarter tatum had like three threes and then i was like you know what that's a lead that i don't think they're gonna blow even though they just blew a lead similarly to the bulls but i felt pretty confident in them in this one uh joe mazula said in his post game interview that he is a fan of math and that is why the Boston Celtics have been shooting way more threes than they have been in recent history and it's been working I mean Tatum is on fire uh, Malcolm Brogdon had a really good game and I'm seeing it right here Jalen Brown ended up with 24 10 and 2. The Cleveland Cavaliers are now 5 and 1 without their starting slash all-star point guard Darius Garland got poked in the eye in game number one like 12 minutes into the season and nothing has really changed like the team has looked so very good and this is a game it felt like they were gonna lose the Knicks had a lot of momentum they were up by like seven or eight points and then the Knicks just Decided they wanted to foul some jump shooters four point play for donovan mitchell four point play for kevin love who came off the bench and gave a really good performance i think he had seven maybe eight threes donovan mitchell has been amazing they're five and one in this game he almost gave them 40 i'm I, he gave them 38 and 12 assists with three rebounds and before the season started every single year me and my guys have this tradition of ranking top 10 players at every position we don't take it too seriously you know there are small debates but we respect each other's opinions because at the end of the day we are just talking basketball but one thing that really blew my mind when we were ranking and, and a lot of people ranking because people in the comment sections play along with us is that donovan mitchell had got to the point where he was as low as the fourth best shooting guard in basketball and i it, it blew my mind recency bias is a real thing and it was a real thing going into the season people are like oh the last member we have of donovan mitchell ain't that great so he might he can't be elite when he is y'all he's playing point guard full time right now and giving them 30s a night with double digit assists and the, the best thing about all of this is bro is locked in defensively he said coming into the season that he knows he can defend and in the last year he was very disappointed in himself and his effort and his defense his last year in the utah jazz and he said he was gonna change that i watched this next game and i watched the previous games of the season for them he is legitimately locked in defensively i mean when he was playing in louisville he was a really good defender and then he got to the nba and now the the, the workload is a lot higher i mean he came in as a rookie it was basically the the leading score of the utah jazz team so you know you give a little to score more but not anymore he's locked in defensively it helps that he has a lot of solid defenders around him for sure um but he has been amazing this season also dean wade um great game when i went to the season opener for bulls versus cavaliers i don't think dean wade touched the floor into like garbage time and now he's starting and he gave them some really really good minutes and just does everything he plays good defense and he hits shots i mean what more can you ask for luke is the first player since michael jordan to start off the first six games of the season with 30 plus points it's th th the first person since jordan he gave him 44 5 and 3 and this is a really good bounce back game because last night they end up blowing a game to the okc thunder they go against the orlando magic two two teams that don't have a, a super ton talent but i'm not disrespecting you okc i, I know y'all out there winning games but the orlando magic are struggling right now and probably will struggle for the rest of the season and luke Luka's legitimately just that man. I mean, he's, they're 3-3 three three on the season. I don't know what the MVP ladder looks like going into week number two, but I don't know how you cannot have Luka at least one or two in that. Um, and I think Doe, Dora Finney-Smith, ended up hitting the big shots of the game to really close it out. Luka has been amazing. All right, so let's talk about the other ones. I'm sorry, uh, Rockets versus Suns. That game did not get a single minute of, of watch time for me, but I see that Devin Booker gave another 30-piece, so he's been locked in at the beginning of this season. So I, I want to talk about the panic button, ladies and gentlemen, because as of right now, the Clippers are two and four. The Warriors are three and four. And the Timberwolves are four and three. You like Kenny. How, how can we be pressing the panic button on a team that's four and three? Bro, let, let, can I read you the teams that they played against this season? They should be, ba based on on paper, straight talent level, they should be near undefeated. I know that's not how the game of basketball works, specifically in the NBA, but like they had a cakewalk of a season to start off with. By the way, Lakers are up by uh, 13 with a minute to go. They did it, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations to them. Started off against OKC then went against uh, Utah, then OKC again, then the Spurs, then the Spurs, then the Lakers, then the Spurs. 
How the heck do they play against the Spurs three times a season? I don't know, but they have. And if we're talking straight talent level, they're more talented than the majority, a great majority of the teams they win against. They're still over 500, which is dope, but they haven't looked as good as at least I anticipated them to look. I'll be honest. You know, even though I had them winning a lot of regular season games, I didn't see them as a contender in the first season. But the other two teams, talking about the Clippers and the Warriors, are for sure contenders. If I asked 100 people who you got coming out the West, um, I would say 50% of them was probably saying the Warriors, and the other 50% was probably saying the Clippers. Like, that's how high people were on them this season, and both of them have come out and underperformed dramatically. And the Clippers is such a super curious case because everybody knows or everybody's been talking about this extreme depth that they've built. And I, I was guilty of this as well and still guilty of this. I mean, you look at their roster, they got 12 to maybe 13 players that should be getting real rotational minutes, real impactful minutes of basketball. But you don't have that top guy. And right now, even PG told the world going into it, I'm number two on this team. He, he told the world that I'm number two to Kawhi's one and Kawhi don't play. And Paul George had the 40-piece early in the season, but every single other game of the season, he hasn't looked nearly like Paul George. And the two wins they have, and wins are wins, so I'm not discrediting them, but the two wins they have against the Sacramento Kings, who just got their first win yesterday, and then against the Lakers, who just got their first win today. So they've the two games that they've won have been against the lower-level teams. And this is supposed to be a team that should be able to at least hold their own when they're going against teams, even if Kawhi Leonard is not there, and that hasn't been the case. Today, they played against the Pelicans, and, and they in this game for at least a half, and then that third quarter came around, and everybody was missing everything. The defense wasn't as good as you want the defense to look, considering the talent level that they have. So should we be hitting the panic button? Because Kawhi is still dealing with lingering injuries. Paul George is more of a number two than a number one, even when Kawhi is out. And the others... They were supposed to be this great core, the deepest team in basketball. Nobody showed up so far. So should we hit the panic button? So far in the season, according to cleaning the glass, they have the second worst offense of basketball, um, only, be, only in front of the LA Lakers, who, again, just got their first win of the season. And LeBron is extremely happy. I ain't mad at you, bro. This is the longest losing streak I've seen probably of your whole career. Um, the second worst offense in basketball. The other team is the Golden State Warriors coming off a championship uh, they end up losing last night games to an inferior team, considering you are the defending champions. And back-to-back -back night, so maybe somewhat of a little leeway. But they lost to the Pistons. Shout-out to the Pistons, man. Kay Cunningham is, is a great engine to, to run your offense. You can really tell the difference when Kade is on the court versus when he's not. Shout-out to him. I mean, to get 20 pieces from Kay, Isaiah Stewart, Bojan Bogdanovich, and Sadiq Bey's elite. And then you got Jay Nivey giving you 15. They looked really good today. But the Warriors, again, defending champions, the defense looks way worse than what we're traditionally seeing. We're talking about a team that was number one and or number two. They can't be both. Number one and number two in defense last season. That, like, that's the two teams we saw in the finals. The Boston Celtics and the Warriors were one and two defensively. And so far this season, boy, oh boy, they just getting walked past. And the numbers say they have the 21st ranked defense in basketball. And the offense is about... Uh, 15th right in the middle so they are struggling to get stops and the offense hasn't been put together completely we are still just two weeks into the nba season so should we be panicking i decided to go back to last year at the same exact point we're talking about november 1st and look at how the league was in that moment versus how it ended on the season and that'll let us know should we be panicking about the warriors should we be panicking about the timberwolves and the clippers so six games to the NBA season last year, this is the way the league looked. Bulls were five and one. Man, oh man, was that a good time for Bulls fandom. The Knicks started off five and one. The Warriors started off five and one. Charlotte and Washington both started off the season really, really great. And y'all know how the story went. The, the Knicks ended up losing, the, uh, missing the playoffs completely. Charlotte only made the play in and the Washington Wizards missed the playoffs completely. So strictly going off record, maybe we shouldn't be hitting the panic button because well, you see last year, three of the top seven teams that were that had the best record didn't even make the playoffs. But let's go to like the defense because we're talking about the Golden State Warriors and their lack of defense so far this season. Last year, the worst defensive teams at this point were the Orlando Magic. That stayed true. They end up winning the lottery. We had OKC at number three, but number two sitting right here was the Memphis Grizzlies. And they were three and three on the season because the offense was still pretty good, but they had the second worst defense in all of basketball through the first two weeks. And people low-key were panicking. And then what happened? The second half of the season came around and well not even the second half but as the season progressed they got better defensively and they ended up being the number two seed on the season the pelicans y'all remember they started off the season like one and eleven or that's what it felt like they were bad offensively and defensively and they found themselves in the play-in and then eventually in the playoff series the bucks the almighty bucks last season started off the year three and four and we were panicking 
They had a bad defense and a, a below average offense. Oh my God. And then you saw them turn it up and they ended up being really good. But what I will say, those two, Memphis and Milwaukee, are extreme cases. Because the other teams that, that were towards the bottom defensively, majority of them stayed that way. Let's think about the Clippers then. Remember, the Clippers have the second worst offense in basketball right now. Looking at the worst offenses at this point last season, well, the bottom three teams were teams that were competing for the number one overall spot. Actually, uh, the, <laughs> these teams all ended up top five. And then we had Dallas. I mean, Dallas were four and two, but they had a, I don't know how this is even possible. They had a terrible offense and a average defense, but they were four and two on the season. And then eventually they turned their defense up and the offense stayed around league average. And I'm looking around. The Clippers had a bad offense to start the season. The Pelicans had a bad offense to start the season. It seems like it's a lot harder to turn the offense on versus the defense. And when I'm thinking about the Minnesota Timberwolves, like I said, I didn't think they were a championship contender to start off the year. Actually, their upcoming schedule is going to tell us a ton about them um, because well, they go against some real playoff teams starting like soon, very soon. I think it's like the Suns and another team, and then they got the I think they got the Lakers. So we'll see how that goes. The reason I did this is to basically tell y'all or show y'all that we shouldn't necessarily be panicking as of right now. I mean, I mean, I guess it depends on what your expectations are, right? I mean, can a team go from one of the worst defenses, defensive teams in basketball to a legitimate title contender? Because that's what the Warriors are trying to do. To, to be a legitimate title winner, that's what the Warriors are trying to do. Or can a team flip the switch to become the second worst offensive team in basketball through the first two weeks and then end up winning the championship? Because that's what the Clippers' aspirations are. I, I, I don't know. But me personally, I, two weeks into the season, I'm not hitting the panic button on either of the three teams. I mean, if there's any reason for me to hit the panic button for the Clippers, it's Kawhi Leonard's health. Um, because for the hundredth year in a row, we're not getting a season of him. Um, and I think a lot of fans kind of anticipated that we would get at least, you know, half of a season, not even half, three fourths of the season from him. But the way it's going right now, that doesn't even look like the case. So do we believe that we're going to low manage throughout the regular season that we're going to get to the postseason and we're going to get the best version of Kawhi? Because I was at his first game back and he looked human. <laughs> it's Kawhi Leonard. He's normally not like this, but he looked human. He looked like a guy that missed basketball for a year and a half. And if we keep, I can't use the word coddling because he, he, he obviously is dealing with stuff, but if we keep doing it to this extent and, and we're saying we're playing, we're just waiting to turn it on, how easy is it going to be to turn it on for him, but also for the teammates around him? This is the fourth year of this core together. They do have the conference finals appearance, you know, which was, which is dope. But other than that, the core hasn't really done much and again i don't want to discredit the conference finals because a, a lot of teams haven't reached the conference finals in a very 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 long time but as a team that when they signed together they told the world we are the kings of new york they told the world that this is supposed to be a team that's going to be built to win a championship they they haven't even really been that much in contention for that because i remember going into that series and they were the heavy underdog considering Kawhi leonard had just tore his acl against the utah jazz a couple games before so so far the top two teams the top two contenders of the western conference both started off slow y'all tell me do you agree or disagree would you be hitting the panic button if you were fans of this team if you are a fan of those teams let me know what you think um and i'll see y'all tomorrow